Hello, everybody. My name is Janine Connolly, and I am a registered dietitian for Memorial's Weight Loss Program. I'm honored to be here with you all today and very excited to talk a little bit about our gut health and our mental health. So let's go ahead and get started. So first, what is the microbiome exactly? Well, our microbiome consists of more than 100 trillion cells, the, more, the majority of them being within our colon, so our gut. These microbial cells are codependent on their hosts, us, as we are dependent on them. So we have this symbiotic relationship with them where we depend on them for digestion of certain nutrients while they help us to prevent certain pathogens from infecting us and even really protecting our gut immunity. There's a lot of other functions that our gut microbial cells do. In particular, we have a very, very intricate relationship between our gut and our brain. So much so that it's actually been nicknamed our body's second brain. For this reason, there's a new field that has emerged of research called nutritional psychiatry, where scientists are now studying the potential links between our gut health and our mental health. So they're theorizing that because we know that our food choices can affect the health of our gut microbiota, and since our gut works so closely with our brain, there has to be a potential link, if not many links, between our guts and our mental health. Here I have laid out this theory in a bit more detail. So first, let's review how the food we eat can affect our gut. Studies have shown that certain foods we consume feed particular con colonies of our gut microbes. The foods typically found in the Western diet have been proven to feed only what we like to call the bad bacteria in our guts. So feeding only the bad bacteria leads to more production of only the bad bacteria, right? And so this leaves little room for diversity in our gut. So how does lack of diversity in our gut affect our brain? Well, gut microbes are responsible for making what we call neurotransmitters. These are molecules that are in charge of sending messages to our brain, which ultimately causes our brain to regulate our emotional and our mental state. So the question remains, can it be true that bad bacteria in our gut can lead to synthesis of neurotransmitters that are ultimately linked to major psychiatric disorders such as depression, eating disorders, addiction, the list goes on and on. So in the past few years, there have been multiple studies that have observed links between our dietary patterns, gut health, and the risk of depression, anxiety, stress, and life satisfaction overall. For example, one study found that a diet rich in fruits and vegetables, whole grains and legumes, and it was lower in the red and processed meats, was associated with a 10% lower odds of depressive symptoms. Additionally, there were two landmark studies where they educated participants on the Mediterranean diet and supplemented with fish oil supplements. And they found that the Mediterranean diet reduced symptoms of depression and increased quality of life. Remember, choosing an eating pattern rooted in the principles of the Mediterranean diet doesn't mean that you have to give up on your cultural foods. In fact, it's important that your eating habits incorporate the foods that are easy to access locally and that are meaningful to you culturally and both personally. So in addition, studies have also found that eating more nutrient-dense foods were linked to less worry, less stress, and greater life satisfaction and even higher diet quality was linked to improved mood. A diet that includes pre and probiotics, we know that this helps maintain stability within our gut. But now research is also suggesting that this may play a role in our body's response to stress and depression. Now, you may be asking yourself, what foods should I avoid then? What foods are going to be contributing to poor mental health status? 
So there are a few substances in particular that might exacerbate, in particular, symptoms of anxiety. These are things like alcohol, caffeine, and added sugars. What's more, research has absorbed, observed correlations between anxiety and a high intake of saturated fat, low intake of fruit, and just poor diet quality overall. So if you notice that you're feeling particularly stressed or anxious, you may want to adjust your diet. Consider reducing your intake of alcohol, caffeine, processed foods, and added sugars. Instead, choose foods that will help reduce inflammation and stress throughout your body. These are things like fiber-rich vegetables, fruits, whole grains, unsaturated fats, and fermented foods, all the foods that were listed on the previous slide, right? So now you may be wondering, well, Janine, how in the world can I even tell if I have poor gut health? Don't you worry, I got you covered. So here I have laid out common signs of a poor gut health. Now, these are the seven most common signs. The first being stomach disturbances. These are things that include gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, heartburn. These can all be signs of an unhealthy gut. A balanced gut will have less difficulty processing foods and digesting foods. Also, a diet high in processed foods and added sugars can decrease the amount of good bacteria in your gut. This causes an imbalance, which can then cause increased sugar cravings, and that can lead to damaging your gut even further. So you want to make sure that you're reducing that overall sugar cravings and the sh just sugar ingestion overall. So remember the high amount of refined sugars, in particular high fructose corn syrup, has been found to be linked to increased inflammation within your body. Inflammation can be the precursor to a number of different diseases and even cancers. So you definitely want to make sure you're reducing the amount of sugar intake. Gaining or losing weight without making changes to your diet or exercise habits may also be a sign of an unhealthy gut. An imbalanced gut can impair your body's ability to absorb nutrients, regulate blood sugar, and even store fat. Weight loss may be caused by small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. This is what we like to call SIBO. While weight gain may be caused by insulin resistance or even the urge to overeat due to decreased nutrient absorption. Additionally, an unhealthy gut might contribute to sleep disturbances like insomnia or just poor sleep patterns, and therefore this will lead to chronic fatigue. The majority of the body's serotonin, this is a hormone that affects our mood and our sleep, is produced mainly in the gut. So gut damage can impair your ability to sleep well. Additional symptoms include skin conditions like eczema. This can be related to a damaged gut. So inflammation in the gut caused by a poor diet or food allergies may cause increased leaking. I'm sure you've all heard of something called leaky gut syndrome. This happens as a direct cause of inflammation in the gut where it allows for certain proteins to quote unquote leak out into the body. This can in turn irritate the skin and cause conditions such as eczema. Additionally, medical research, researchers are continually finding new evidence of the impact of the gut on our immune system. So it's actually thought that an unhealthy gut may increase systemic inflammation and alter the proper functioning of our immune system. This can lead to autoimmune diseases where the body attacks itself rather than the harmful invaders. And lastly, food intolerances, which are the results of difficulty digesting certain foods. This is different than a food allergy, which is caused by an immune system reaction to certain foods. So it's thought that food intolerances may be caused by poor quality of bacteria in the gut. This can lead to difficulty digesting the trigger foods and unpleasant symptoms such as bloating, gas, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and nausea. There's even some evidence that food allergies may also be related to just gut health overall. 
So now that we went over the common signs of poor gut health, you may be wondering, okay, well, what in the world can I do to improve my gut health? So here I've laid out seven really simple ways that you can improve your gut health. The first being lowering our stress. Chronic high levels of stress are hard on your whole body, including your gut. Some ways to lower stress may include meditation, walking, getting a massage, spending time with friends and family, diffusing essential oils, decreasing caffeine intake, yoga, having a pet. We all know we love our fur babies. And last, just laughing. Laugh a little and stop taking life so seriously. Second, not getting enough or sufficient quality of sleep can have serious impacts on your gut health. This can then in turn contribute to more sleep issues. So try to prioritize getting at least seven to eight hours of uninterrupted sleep per night. Your doctor may even be able to help you if you are having trouble sleeping, so make sure you consult your primary physician. Chewing your foods thoroughly and eating your meals more slowly can help promote full digestion and absorption of our nutrients. This is what we like to call mindful eating. This may help you reduce digestive discomfort and maintain a healthy gut. Drinking plenty of water. This has been shown to have a beneficial effect on the mucosal lining of our intestines, as well as on the balance of good bacteria in our guts. So staying hydrated is one of the most simple ways to promote healthy guts. Water is your new best friend. Adding a prebiotic or probiotic supplement to your diet may be a great way to improve your gut health. So remember that prebiotics provide the food meant to promote the growth of beneficial bacteria, while probiotics are the live good bacteria that we take to replenish our gut. People with overgrowth, such as SIBO, should not take probiotics. So not all probiotic supplements are high quality or will actually provide a benefit. So it's best to consult either your healthcare provider, primary care physician, or your own dietitian when choosing a probiotic or prebiotic supplement just to ensure that you are getting the best health benefits. Reducing the amount of processed, high sugar, and high fat foods that you eat can contribute to better gut health. Additionally, eating plenty of plant-based foods and leaner proteins can positively impact your gut. So that means a diet high in fiber. This has also been shown to contribute tremendously to a healthy gut microbiome. So making a couple of these changes in our diet will definitely help to improve our gut health. So now you may be wondering, well, I know what to do, but what foods can I actually eat to improve my gut health? So here I've laid out the best foods for your gut. High fiber foods such as legumes, beans, peas, some um, fruits like bananas and berries, leafy greens and vegetables, asparagus and leeks have been shown to have a positive impact on our guts in numerous studies. Additionally, garlic and onion may have some anti-cancer and immune system enhancing properties, which are closely tied to some of our, the primary functions of our gut. And who doesn't love garlic and onion, right? Delicious. So while these benefits are definitely anecdotal and there's more research that needs to be done, but definitely including garlic and onion in your diet as well. And lastly, fermented foods such as kimchi, sauerkraut, yogurt, tempeh, miso, and kefir. These are all great dietary sources of natural probiotics instead of having to take a supplement. So while the quality of these foods might vary, there are benefits on the gut microbiome that are very, very well studied. You can also include collagen-rich foods, uh, such as bone broth and salmon. These have been shown to be beneficial for our overall health and for our gut health specifically. So while there's still a lot of research being done on our gut health and our mental health, it's still very important to incorporate these foods within our diet now. In summary, remember that your health matters, not just for the overall health of your physical body, but also for your mental health as well. So when we begin to shift our dietary habits towards a more well-balanced diet, we begin to notice changes both physically and mentally. 
So it's important to take the time to prioritize your health. Doesn't mean that you should never touch a cookie or french fries ever again in your life. Absolutely not. A well-balanced diet means to make sure we also include a variety of different foods that are providing the best nourishment for our gut and our brain. Remember, it is never too late to be well. I hope you enjoyed this presentation today and I hope you gained some new insights and maybe even some new perspectives on the power that nutrition has on our overall health and well-being. Again, my name is Janine Connolly, your weight loss dietitian. And below here, I have my contact information. So feel free to reach out for any of your nutritional or weight loss concerns. Be well and stay healthy, everyone. Bye-bye.